morning. It is February 2nd, and uh, again, I'm your host, Andy Flagg, with Mountain Computers. And today we're going to talk about hard drives. Uh, yesterday and the day before, we talked about processors like these. This is an AMD processor. This is an Intel processor. And uh, this is an LGA-775. And this is a Socket 478. So let's talk about hard drives for a second. Okay, so my first hard drive uh, was a Winchester 5 meg back in, oh gosh, 1970 something. Uh, prior to that, I was working on mainframes uh, Harris 500, Harris 800. That was in the late 70s. So hard drives became more interesting in the 80s. Uh, my best friend, uh, Vic, at the time, we were in high school, his dad got him an IBM XT uh, and it had a 20 meg hard drive. We played with that in our senior year for quite a while, I think junior and senior year, it was Christmas. But anyhow, this here is another hard drive. See the size of this? It's pretty big. Um, this is an IDE drive. It is a Quantum Fireball Bigfoot um, five and a quarter series. That's five and a quarter inches, okay? The other drives that you'll see are is this type of drive. This is a, a two and a half inch drive and it goes in a laptop. It's made by Toshiba. This is made by Quantum. Um, this is uh, serial ATA, um, and there's different speeds. Just like IDE, there was really one type of connector, ribbon connector, master-slave combination, up to two drives on one ribbon cable, and then uh, maybe a second IDE, IDE 0, IDE 1, so you had maximum four drives if you didn't have optical drives. And then here, you actually have another drive. This is three and a half inch. This is five and a quarter. It's five and a quarter. That's three and a half. Two and a half. So this is a 500 gig Western Digital blue label we call it. Um, it's pretty fast. Pretty fast. And then the older laptop drives. This is another two and a half inch. This is ATA6. ATA6. See the the pins. I don't know if you can see that. See. See the pins? Mm -hmm. um, just makes a lot of noise when it gets old. It starts to die. They all squeal and stuff like that. But the point that I'm trying to make is with each one of these drives, hard drives, you have storage. The uh, processors process your data, manage the computer. This is long-term storage. This is like long-term storage in your brain. When the power of the computer goes off, it gets stored here. We'll talk about RAM in our next segment. That's your short-term memory. So when the computer goes off, the RAM forgets what it was doing. This does not forget what it's doing. This is magnetic. There's uh, the new drives we'll talk about here, SSD drives. Those are not magnetic. Those are solid-state drives. So as far as the speeds go, um, let me back up for a second. Uh, serial ATA, there's basically data cable and a power cable. And you can see this little connector here and this little connector. These are plastic. They're keyed. It's got a little L key. Um, don't break those off. Uh, I've seen people playing around with these and they snap them off. And it has a hard time doing data recovery. Anyhow, there's the speeds on these are 1.5, 3, and 6 gigabits per second. That's pretty fast. Um, with Western Digital, there's a couple manufacturers out there um, that we like. Seagate, Western Digital, um, those are the two main ones. You've got um, Toshiba, Hitachi, got some others like that. Um, there's probably 20 out there and five mainstream. So when it comes to hard drives, um, they are magnetic. And there's a bunch of cylinders inside that spin. Okay. So when you turn them on, you hear them spin up a little bit and you feel them. And if you move them around while they're on, you'll feel sort of like a gyroscopic effect. Um, what that means is that as the drive is spinning, you'll feel the, I don't know, it's the movement of the spinning drive. You're not supposed to do that. Um, but you can tell when you're, if it's working. And you can hear it too. You can put your ear up to it and you can hear it. Um, what else? hard drives. Oh, prices. Um, just like with the process I was telling you about pricing. Um, hard drives. Uh, the sizes. There's, back in the day, it was like uh, 
240 meg, 540, just weird numbers of megs. Then it went into the gigabytes. So you had one gig, two gig, four gig. Maximum partition size was like two gig for uh, like MS-DOS operating system 3.3 up to 6.22. Then you had to do what's called different partitions on the drive. Inside the physical drive, you had to partition it out in two gig sectors. Once we broke certain barriers and limits, you were able to go up in higher sizes. So you get up into, um, you know, you got into drives like this one here. This one is, it's hard to tell. This is eight gig, this is an eight gig drive. 500 gig drive. What's this one? Mm, Got to look for it. This is 40 gig. Um, weird numbers. I like binary. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, um, 256, 512, 10, 24, 20, 48, uh, 30, 72, 40, 96, so on so 61, 44, 81, 92, uh, 10, 240 or 10, 280. And you just go on and on, it's binary, two to the something. However, um, some hard drive manufacturers do weird numbers with like the SSD drives, 240 gig, um, 500 gig. I would prefer it's 512 or 256. And there's overhead, so there's, just like any drive, there's part of it that's reserved to actually index the data and then the rest of it's available for data. Uh, so think about a library. A library has a bunch of books. That's what a drive is. It's your data is a bunch of books in the library. And the cool thing about it is you have a card catalog. Any of you who are old school go into the card catalog, you go through this index, you find your book, you go get your book, you check it out. So that's the same thing with hard drive technology. It has an index, which is your table of contents. That table of contents leads you to your data. That data is in more or less... Mm, it's like a, a volume set of encyclopedias. You'll find the, the beginning of your volume of data. It's not necessarily volumes like in drive technology. But you have volume 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the end of your data file. That's how that works. Same with the program. The program is actually stored on your hard drive. Uh, what else? Pricing. Oh, back to pricing. Um, drives today. Um, 1 gig. Whew. 10 gig, 64 gig, like a, a 500 gig, 512 gig SSD today runs around 120 to 160 bucks, one terabyte. Actually, it's come down quite a bit, um, depending on the manufacturer, um, because the the memory manufacturers are now into the solid state, like they do with your cell phones. Um, it's the same technology, in a way, but with hard drives. Say for instance, a one terabyte Western Digital Drive is about 50 to 60 bucks. And with the internet, somebody can't just sell it to you and say, oh, it's X. I mean, you can actually look it up by part number and see what the actual retail price is. Um, that's why we would, we at, at Mountain Computers, we really don't have a large, a, much of a margin on, on parts that we include in the repairs because you can look it up and see, oh yeah, uh, we bought it for X at wholesale or resale value and we sold it for Y and our margin is 5 to 10 percent. That includes shipping and handling, that's the end freight, um, and then the tax you add to it whether or not it's retail or used, unfortunately that's the way it works now, and um, then our labor. So you have a hard drive, you have some labor, you install it, you transfer your data um, from one hard drive to the other in a computer or across computers. But back to hard drives, so your pricing. Mm, Drives used to be expensive. And there is one drive technology that I haven't even touched on, and that's SCSI. Um, that used to be popular in Macintosh computers. Um, basically, it's, the, it's a similar connector in a way, but uh, SCSI it was in mainframes. SCSI is in large industrial machines, Unix systems, Unix System 5, AT&T, so on and so forth back in the day. And uh, so SCSI, doesn't really have a place anymore. Um, it used to, it really used to, um, but for this day and for this uh, video, I really want to tell you that uh, I like SCSI. SCSI was fast. It would use something called block mode technology. While your processor would say, transfer these files, the SCSI technology, um, Adaptech was the controller cards, the drives were attached to it. Um, so you could tell 
the controller, the CPU could actually tell the controller, I need you to transfer all this data, and it would go off and do its thing, and the CPU could go on and do its job. However, in, in today's architecture of electronics and computing, um, the whole paradigm has changed. So when SCSI was really good in the day for production, bulk, heavy lifting data, uh, storage and retrieval, um, that's no longer the case. As soon as you went from IDE to serial ATA, things got really fast in a hurry. So that's about it for now. So I'm gonna take a break, put your comments down below here, and whether or not you like, and subscribe. And we'll come back uh, in a little while, and we'll probably cover RAM, I'll probably cover RAM, and then some motherboards, but that's about it. And then we may revamp this um, and cover some more drives, but don't forget, these drives here, this Quantum Bigfoot, this Quantum Drive um, still runs when you spin it up. It sounds like an aircraft taking off, you know, the engines of an aircraft. And oh, one other thing, I brought this out here. This is a serial ATA laptop drive connector. That's USB 3. That blue connector here says USB 3. This here is the serial ATA connector that goes to a laptop drive. So you can just plug this in. Let's see which way. Right there. It's keyed. So you can take your laptop hard drive, plug this into your USB 3 port on your computer, and transfer your data, check this, the drive, repair the drive, recover the data on it if it's possible. But the reason why there's no extra power is because laptop drives get the power from the USB port. So just wanted to share with that, um, show you this information. This here is um, an Apricon, a Apricorn um, IDE to USB adapter, and uh, they're like 35 bucks. But always have a couple of these around, so if you have to pull your hard drive, you can plug it into another computer and look at it and see what's going on. So, with that being said, let's take a break, and I'll be back a little later. Thanks.